The goal at those experiments is to study a state of matter called the quark gluon plasma, which is a state of matter that existed at the very, very early stages of the universe. driving tour sure and I can point stuff out wow. and then we'll go to my lab okay uh, and I'll great. take you I'll take, I'll take you around <laughs> when was it in the days uh, during and before World War II it was known as Camp Upton back then but I think since the end of World War II on it's been exclusively a scientific facility the Department of Energy owns the lab and it's administered by a non-profit corporation you have your own police? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's Brookhaven Police. Yes, we have our own police. We have our own fire department. Those look like residents. They're dormitories for visiting scientists. So here's our fire department up here. Are the police very busy? Like, are they here to keep people out of... That's part of it, right? They're also there to make sure that we stop at every stop sign and don't exceed the speed limit. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're here to keep us safe. You can look over on your left here. Yep. See that stack? Yeah. That, and that building next to it? Yep. That's the old graphite reactor. It's an old nuclear reactor from the 50s that's been decommissioned. Up here on your right is the Center for Functional Nanomaterials. They study materials at the nanoscale. So that would be 10 to the minus 9 meters, so things that are very, very small. They're actually going to demolish this stack this year. It's, it's going away, yeah. This here is the old high-flux beam reactor. Yeah. Uh, so this was um, an old nuclear research reactor that was shut down in the 1990s. Unfortunately, what happened was uh, they developed a leak of radioactive tritium uh, and it leaked into the groundwater which was really bad and the local community got very upset. Um, we cleaned it up, fixed the reactor, but by that time the community was no longer trusting of yep. the lab to run a nuclear reactor so we shut it down. That's the new synchrotron that we're building. Wow! Yeah, so we'll, we'll go in there a little bit later. Okay. But first I wanted to show you, since you had mentioned yeah. your solar panels. We have a very massive solar array here on site. So I believe it covers about 30 acres and it produces 32 megawatts of electricity. And nobody has really ever built a large distributed solar array up yep. here in the Northeast. So this is a way for us to study how it works up here. Now I'm pretty sure we can't go in there because okay. uh, that's going to be an authorized access only. Yep. Uh, but you can see, this is sort of the tip of it. This is 30 or so acres. 30 acres of, of that? Of this, On yeah. Side. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. You can see that array from space. Oh really? Google yeah, Maps or something? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. Google Maps. It's oh. very distinct. 
Yeah, you'll see Brookhaven looks like a, a large solar array. Yeah. And then you'll see a whole bunch of rings for our, our particle accelerators. <laughs> so the accelerators are underground or above ground? Most of them are above ground. I'm going to take you around one that's underground right now. Okay. Oh, this is the NOAA weather station. So. Oh, yeah, at Brookhaven Labs. Yeah, yeah, this is them. Wow. It's interesting to think that Eric Forsyth worked here. Mm -hmm. All those years. Yes. And he comes back to the lab every once in a while and gives. He does. Gives After a... he goes on one of his adventures, he's gracious enough to come to the lab and show us his videos and talk to us and answer questions. And he always gets a very good size and enthusiastic audience. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. yeah. People that he worked with, or just... I think so. People that he worked with, and a lot of people like myself who are just interested. Wow. Um, there's a, a lot of sailors here. Really? Like Brookhaven. Brookhaven oh. Sailing Club? There isn't. There isn't, really? but I really should start one. The accelerator that we're going to now is called RIC, R-H-I-C, uh -huh. which stands for the Relativistic Heavy Ion Collider. They have two rings that are right next to each other, and in one ring they accelerate ionized gold in one direction, yep. and in the other ring they accelerate ionized gold in the other direction. And they accelerate them up to very nearly the speed of light. And then there are various points along this ring where the two rings cross and then the two beams can interact with each other. And the gold ions collide at, at great energy. And the goal at those experiments is to study a state of matter called the quark gluon plasma, which is a state of matter that existed at the very, very early stages of the universe, right after the Big Bang. So it's, it's sort of a new state of matter, you know, instead of, uh, you know, you're, you're familiar with you know, liquid, solid, gas, yep. and uh, quark gluon plasma is another state of matter. So we're actually passing over the ring now in this little bump. We're going over the ring. We're going over the wow. ring. Wow. So you so, mentioned how they're using gold. Yes. Why is that? Is it the properties that... I imagine it's because gold is relatively easy to strip electrons off of, yeah. uh, which is why it's also a good conductor. We're driving around on the inside of it, and we'll go past some of the experimental facilities where the rings cross. So this state of matter doesn't ever mm -hmm. exist naturally? To... Um, well, sure, it can exist naturally. Cosmic rays can collide with each other. Oh, yeah. Um, but this, it's happening in a, in a place where we can actually study it. <laughs> it's hard to study cosmic rays. How long does a state of matter exist? Very small fraction of a second. So this is another place where they cross. I never thought I'd ever actually see this in my lifetime. That's amazing. So here's a section of beam pipe. Get an idea of what it looks like. This whole ring consists of a whole bunch of sections that look like this. It was built by Northrop Grumman. And there are two of these that are sitting next to each other in the ring. And then in places they cross over. Yeah. Physical signs of gold particle. We use them at the atomic scale. So it's just the gold nucleus. I guess about an angstrom or so. Too small to actually Very small. see. Yeah. <laughs> and what keeps it suspended inside? Magnets. 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 Because they're, they're ionized. So now they have a positive charge. So yeah. now we can steer them. The gold by itself is not charged, it's neutral. If yeah. it has all of its electrons. You strip away its electrons, and now all of a sudden it has a positive charge. And now you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Magnets. Yeah. Including making them travel. Around a two mile diameter hula hoop. Just yes. This is one of those magnets. This is called a sextopole. 